East Wall Fortress secured by Tran's army, Dirna Antares retreats deeper within the forest to his stronghold of Centurion's Rest. As Tran's first mission ends in victory, the Empire recognizes his promise as a commander and entrusts him to invade Centurion's Rest and destroy any rebel forces in the area. Despite Zelos' enthusiasm for victory in battle, the meaning of this rebellion begins to weigh on Tran's mind. These are not an invading force. They are common people, fellow Viridians. Perhaps if Antares is brought to heal, there can be a quick end to the violence. Village of Eastwall. The people seem relieved to see us. The fighting has left their doorstep. Things can get back to normal. We have some time before our next mission. Eastwall will be our home base for now. We can trade with the locals. Maybe recruit some of them into our force. I'll be at the blacksmith giving my gear a touch-up. Catch you later. Hey Tran, let me show you around. No need to rush, we can relax a bit now. We can talk and get caught up with each other. And as Zelo said, this is a chance for us to make improvements to our squads and troops by trading with the locals. On the top is the resource bar. This shows how much gold, resources, and tech points we have. On the top right, we can see our faction rank and progress towards the next rank. On the left are all the things we can do at our home base. If you need me to walk you through these, click on the info icon and I'm happy to help. And or check out the Toros option. Don't be afraid to check this anytime for helpful guides. When you're all finished up with the home base, just deploy to move on to the next chapter. Alright, so to begin with, this is the main menu in between chapters, and I will cover uh, quite a bit of it this first time we are looking at it. So we have all these options, they are grayed out because I don't currently have any reserve troops. Um, so we'll, we will cover that in a minute. Let's take a look at squad operations. We can see uh, right here where there's green arrows. This indicates that they are ready for a class change, but I don't actually have resources for this. So for example, she has reached her maximum class point. So she has mastered the medic ability. Once she's mastered the medic ability or medic class, she can upgrade to any of these class two ranks. But for example, I do not have a gem. I do, I do have the 20 magic points. That's what this indicates, but I don't have a gem, so she can't promote. However, if I were to go to, say, another character, this guy, he doesn't have the strength to be a soldier, but he has the strength to be a spearman. Whereas the other fighter in this party has the strength to be a soldier. Let's go ahead and remove real quick, just to kind of demonstrate a little bit. Oh, actually, not this group. Actually, you know what? Go, we'll go ahead and remove um, M and M. Just to just kind of show you some things. All right, so now we have these things that are that are available. So, for, exa for example, form new squad. Unit status, use item, change class, and dismiss unit. These all operate in the reserve section. Like dismiss unit, it's only in the reserve. I can't go over to the left side. The star right here above the spearman indicates that he is capable of being a leader. I don't really think that's necessary. It's kind of takes up extra real estate. For example, this health bar, we don't really need that right now. I think I'd, it'd be better to show, for example, their XP and CP bars or something. We can change the class, but again, this would only apply for it, people in the reserve. If I want to change one of these, I actually have to go to the squad. Currently, these characters will not allow themselves to be disbanded. So Zelo says, You're not getting rid of me that easily. Hey, come on. I never abandoned my friends. No, not again. Let me prove myself to you. What would I do if I abandoned my destiny? All right, so I can't disband the parties, but I can, for example, form a new team. I cannot do it with this guy. Because this, he, he is not a leader. He is a tier 1 unit, meaning the lowest rank. And we'll look at the, what, what the four kinds of tier 1s are. This is a tier 2 unit. Tier 2 and above can, can lead a, a party. So we can create a, a team with him. And we, then we can add from the reserve and just pop him anywhere facing to the right. So uh, left and right, there's three total spots. But up and down, there's actually a, in between the squares. So there's here, here, and here. But there's also the in-betweens. All right, uh, let's see what else is there. Artifacts is just basically equipment. I've only, I've only got the first slot unlocked automatically when you play the game. You have to spend research points to unlock the second and third slots. Capacity is part of your leadership. So if we take a look at unit status, you can see he has, he has 36 leadership. So he has 36 capacity. Let's take a look at another team. She has 42 leadership, and so she has 42 capacity. Capacity is basically how many how much equipment and how many people you can have in your party each person typically takes 10 so we have three people in this party so there's 10 if i remove him 
place them in reserve. We now have, we're now down to 20 capacity. So I can't just fill this up with nine people right now. Later on, perhaps. All right, tech tree. So when we rank up our faction, we get scrolls. And the higher, the, the higher our rank, the more experience we need and the more scrolls we get per level. So at the moment, we can only access this lower, lowest tier of stuff. If we want to access this next tier, we would, if you can see here at the bottom, I'm trying to nev, oh, there we go. It says locked. Unlock seven more tier one techs to unlock. So I just need to take any, any seven of these. Now these final ones here, they're called capstones. And to unlock them, you have to have everything in that tree. So for example, if I want to unlock, if I want to unlock this tactics, command, professionalism, where I get a uh, max tier one classes plus three levels and full loyalty and loyalty basically reduces how much capacity is needed to to add to your squad if i wanted that i have to get everything in this tree so there's only five per per tree so for for example this all of all tier two requires seven techs so i would take i which i should try to get five of one and two uh, of any others so i'm thinking we'll get merchant envoys and mentorship so i'm, I'm gonna plan for the long haul So we can see here that in Recruit, I now unlock the bottom. This was not here. I, I, I could only have seen six if I went here earlier. So in this screen, you get four infinite tier ones. Uh, they'll always be tier one. And I could I can en en enlist them now, recruit them now, and they'll, they'll be replaced by another randomly generated character. So we can see on the right, she is Dark Affinity, which is good because that gives her strength and magic bonuses. Water Affinity gets magic bonuses. Earth affinity gets health bonuses. And uh, lightning, I think gets skill bonuses. Let me take a look at my notes. Uh, lightning gets some strength, loses hit points, and gets skill. Ludwig. Now, to take a look at some of these things here. These look like they might be cool traits. Here's the, here's the catch though. Skirmisher always has gorilla. So this is a class-based trait right here. Mercenary is a bad thing. If I hit the F key on the keyboard, it will tell me that he has to he gives an extra two capacity cost so if a normal person costs 10 he costs 12. unless he's the leader then he just costs 10. so this is kind of default for any of these bottom units any of the units that are not basic will always be a mercenary like this is a mercenary he's a mercenary and so forth so gorilla is just part of his class it's nothing special so any skirmisher will always have gorilla any of these bottom three will have mercenary so we can ignore that He's got lucky, and it just tells me some people are just lucky. I, I guess this means he probably evades and does critical hits more. This character is cold-blooded, which gives him 25% more damage to already damaged enemies. So I don't actually want any of these characters, but we'll go ahead and recruit a couple just to play around with. So we're going to recruit her, and we can see this has been replaced by another medic. So the first one will always be medics, second will always be bowmen, militia, and fighter. These four are the tier one classes. I can, I can recruit many of them. All right. Trader, if with that tech tree, tech item that I picked up, I have unlocked the fourth item slot here, Kesha's Dai Katana. It could be anything else. These are all random. At a store, you can purchase an item, and then it's replaced by the purchased tag. Well, I just bought an iron, so it added here. I'm not going to keep this one because what, I've, what I'm working on is... Uh, I, I typically do kind of the farming stuff off camera. So, for example, I made a couple saves of, the, of, of just arriving into town. So let's take a look at some of the other options we've acquired. I'm going to take a look at the marketplace. So this character is Soldier Captain. That's pretty cool. Any heavy infantry unit in his squad will cost two less. So that means that instead of 10, they'll cost eight and so forth. So that's that's a good savings right there. That, that is a really powerful skill. So I made a backup save of this if I wanted to, to use it. There's also Imposing, which is this unit is more likely to be targeted by enemies in battle. So this he he would be he would be the uh, if he's not heavy infantry now I think I think he counts as heavy infantry but uh, he would upgrade to heavy infantry eventually I, I'm pretty sure he is heavy he's also dark so he gets bonuses to strength so he, he would compa he would he would be very compatible with Richard and this would be a, an amazing start right here but I decided I would keep going just to look to see if there's anything else so I, I loaded my auto save time and time again and I came up with this so far. Take a look at the marketplace. Treasure Hunter. Now, I don't know how good this is, but if I can, for example, farm arena tokens, I could pretty much have an infinite... Well, maybe not infinite. I don't know. I don't know if you can get arena tokens inside an arena. But basically, the only way you can do battles 
in this current version of the game is to spin an arena token where you just get thrown into another battle. I'm kind of hoping I can find arena tokens in the arena. Whatever the case, I really think maybe this is the way to go. So instead of having that super squad, maybe Treasure Hunter. But he's the only good aspect of, of this group. Smite is cool, but it... it I mean, if I'm going to use this archer, he's probably going to be teamed up with other archers. And you, he, they don't really, you don't get to decide where, where they shoot any, anyways. But he does have a lot of threat value. It's probably because of Smite. So, under Trader, we, uh, we, nothing valuable, unfortunately. So this is what I think I'll be running with. All right. So that was stage one of Township. That, that was me loading and loading. I've been, I don't know, maybe, let's say we've been doing this for like an hour or something. That's just stage one. The next thing I'm going to do... <laughs> And again, I'll edit this. I'll edit, you know, the lo the the loading and farming out. I, that's that's. I give you the 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 polished version of the playthrough. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let's say I want a bunch of medics. In fact, I've. So let's I'll keep recruiting them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, they're okay. So on the eleventh one, which I didn't hire this one yet, he gets challenger, gains three strength at the start of battle for every unit in the enemy squad. This doesn't happen because I get 10, it's just there's a small chance for any of these grunts to start with an ability, such as how he started with Smite. So let's say I hired her. The next one had Assassin's Heart. Critical damage increased by 50%. Now, these medics don't actually have an attack, though I could always change them to another class once they get enough class points, which you can acquire just by doing the non-combat heal. They get class points for that, but just them. The rest of the party does not. In battle, even if, say, a character is melee and he can't swing at the enemy because the enemy is out of range, he will still get class points because he was engaged in battle. So if I wanted, for example, to change her to something else, say to a sword master, crit uh, critical damage might be useful. So what I'm going to do at this next phase is I'm going to be loading this save. You can see that we still have the treasure hunter and we're just going to hire a bunch of medics until I find medics that I like. So, for example, there was a skill that said Immortal Spirit or something. Like, I don't want her to have Imposing. I don't want my healer to be more likely targeted by enemies. But yeah, there was, there was, a, there was a character that had Immortal Spirit, and it said she, had a, she would be guaranteed to revive once per chapter. I'm assuming it's actually once per battle, because arena matches are still in the same chapter. But we just, again, we've loaded the save. I'm just going to keep doing this for a while until I get, come up with a good squad. So... Uh, give me a bit to, you know, look, here's a mortal spirit right here. Look at this. Look at this. Bam. Now, I probably will never, I mean, I might not need it on an archer, but that's better than someone that doesn't have it, right? So, yeah, I'm going to be farming this for a while, and then we'll tune back in once we start um, setting up our team. However, while we're at it, I'll go and show you what we'll probably do with this group. So I can't change her class. Even though she's got the promotion icon, she's ready to be promoted, I do not have the resources for her. I will go ahead and promote these guys. Even though I don't want them to stay maybe this class, your character's level ups in the experience change based off of what class they are at the same time. So th this is the same way in Ogre Battle. How do I know this? I just, I, I basically, I ran a crew, leveled them up five times and just like wrote down all this information that's that's basically how i do these games like i've already got a spreadsheet for this game and i've only just done the first chapter um so yeah we're gonna go ahead and give him spearman just so that he can get better stat ups which is one of the reasons why i will also be trying to recruit everybody right now because if i can recruit them i can promote them to a tier two and then they can get their level ups as the game progresses so even if i can't use them all right now if I get them early, they will probably be more powerful than if I recruited them later on. That's what I think. Not sure, but that's what I think. So go ahead and promote him to a Spearman. And also, I'm not necessarily keeping this save because I'm going to load and re rehire those people. This is basically what I'll be doing. Uh, and we're going to also upgrade him to a Soldier. And we will probably... Okay, so in Ogre Battle, this is the way I this is the way, this is the way it's recommended, at least in most FAQs and walkthroughs. In Ogre Battle, you just left your Lord at the base. He just sat there at the base and guarded it. Uh, I'm, pro I'm probably going to do the same thing here. Um, so I, we can form a new squad out of, say, this the soldiers we just did. And if I had 
you know, medics and stuff that I actually wanted. Like, this was the one I started with. She's loyal. Um, none of these medics have anything. But I did get the guy with smite, which there's not enough capacity for here. Again, this is not the actual squad we're running with, but this is what it's going to... This is what I'll be doing once I find the soldiers I'm looking for. I don't know what soldiers I'm looking for yet. Well, no, no, no. I, once I find um, qu quality soldiers. So, give me a bit and we'll tune back in as I hire these guys. Alright, I have spent all my gold on hiring people. I have hired 29 soldiers. Every, everything I, I had, I spent into this. I didn't even buy the iron. Because again, I'm trying to plan for the long haul, and this is the way I think I should be doing it. If I want to defeat the hardest difficulty mode. So it is, in a way, kind of therapeutic to look at these groups, because when you... If you look down here, aside from the characters I started with, so take a look at the right below trait learnable. East, oh, darn it, mouse. Okay, hold on. There we go, precision. So, it's, in, in, it's not, I don't know if therapeutic's the right word, but as I scroll through them, everybody has like a little trait. Now, I will tell you that my medics suck. I only have so much patience, and I just picked up anybody with a trait. So for example, this medic, uh, right here, fire and imposing. So her affinity is fire, and I'll show you why that's bad in a second. And imposing, well, she is more likely to be targeted by enemies in battle. I'll probably think of something to do with her, because medics, she can. I can eventually turn her into some sort of warrior instead. She just happened to start out as a medic, so... I mean, it's something? I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out. So, for example, this is why I wouldn't want a, a, a fire for a wizard. So, fire gives me bonuses to strength and penalties to magic. Well, medics heal by using magic, so... Yeah. <laughs> but I just I just get tired of it. I mean, I don't know how long I've been doing this for. So, but I started with 14 people at the beginning of this chapter, and I now have 43. So what I've done is I've essentially taken all the, the newbies, uh, because I want to rank them up as fast as possible so they can, as, as my army plays the game, they will get levels in their tier 2 ability, or tier 2 class. So for example, this bowman, let's say I decide to level him up to archer. And then I just leave him alone. As he sits on the bench and racks up experience points, he'll be getting archer attribute points rather than bowman attribute points, if that makes any sense. So I'm trying to plan for the long haul here. This next battle, you can have up to six squads. The auto, auto deploy, and if you didn't have any form, if you didn't form any new squads, you won't even get the, the option to, to, to try to deploy. All right. That is all set. Also for tech tree, instead of getting this one, because I already know what the last item is. I, I showed you what it was and wasn't anything fascinating. I went ahead and went for conscript since I was uh, getting so many people anyways. And half class mastery is not a bad deal. All right. So let's do the supports and then we'll get on to the battle. As always, I put in chapter marks so you can always jump around as you need to. So in case you really don't like to see this kind of stuff, you can always jump straight to the battle. All right, so here's what these things mean. First, this is like the, the two characters who will be involved. It, it will always reward you with faction experience. And in this case, it'll become they'll become friends as a result of this. And when you're friends, you get... I guess it doesn't show me. When you're friends, you get a, a small morale bonus when you're within three tiles of each other. So let's start with Tran and Jules. Hey there, Jules. Oh, hi, Tran. Great to see you. I'm pretty relieved that you and I ended up on the same team. Not sure if I would have made it through the Academy without you. Yeah, I'm glad we got assigned to the same campaign, too. Lucky break, huh? So, what's it been like for you growing up in Viridia as a Sayunari? Well, I feel very fortunate. My adoptive parents made sure I didn't grow up without knowing about my Sayunari heritage. It sounds like such a wondrous place. Yeah, shame outsiders can't show their face there anymore without being turned away. They lost so much during the Succession War, and for basically nothing. They're protective of their way of life, so say my parents. Maybe Viridia's leaders could learn a thing or two from that. I can't imagine what good is to come from the attacks on the Denari temples. Most Viridians are devotees of Denar. It's as if they're trying to provoke people. Eh, I know you don't like this sort of thing. It's okay. You usually go over my head with this stuff, but I like listening to it anyway. You're great company, Tran. Huh. 
Sometimes I don't understand your optimism, but I sure appreciate it. Thing we showed up, huh, Jules? Can't let the others take all the glory. Ah, oh, come on. Glory's not all that important. Says you. You're sweet and all, but you were adopted by rich nobles. The rest of us have to scratch and claw for everything we get. What do you want so bad, anyway? You're doing great. Jules, have I ever told you that I tried to become a paladin? Not yet, but that seems right up your alley. Exactly what I keep saying. But the temple leadership said I was too hot-headed and ambitious. Ugh, so here I am, just a plain old army priestess. I'm sorry, Sybil. This seems very important to you. Have you ever seen the girls in the Sisterhood of Justice? They're so amazing and loved by everyone. I have to become a paladin somehow. I just have to. Sorry, I'm being so selfish. What do you want for your future, Jules? Well, I can't say I've thought about it too much. I just take things day by day. Yeah, that's probably easier than always chasing the future. Alright, uh, we are done with this. So let's go ahead and deploy. Chapter 2, For Whose Sake. Damn, are we already too late? Our base at Marienburg is under attack. Looks like we don't have time for the rest of the army to catch up. We've got to save that base. Got it. Let's meet up with the base defender and eliminate those rebels. Alright, so if you don't even have any additional squads, you don't get the option to deploy anything. We currently have four mandatory characters, using up my four out of six limit here. That's why I created two extra squads. They are not very sturdy at all. In fact, one of them just has three people. It's because there's not he doesn't have a high leadership score. Of note is I went ahead and replayed the first map as well. So Zelos only has three experience. Instead of letting him do stuff in that map, I gave all the experience to everybody else who's lower level. The way this game works is everybody always has 100 experience to meet, but the weight of that experience is different. What I mean is, since Zelos is level 8, if he kills this level 4 guy, he's not going to get much experience. But if, for example, this party of level 3 people kill a level 4 guy, they will get a lot. In fact, they'll probably level just by killing one guy. For that reason, I think it's going to be very manageable to run a large team, because they'll level very quickly. My only worry is, will I have the resources for them? Alright, let's go ahead and begin this. We will always find a way. For my people, for my homeland. So, I, while symmetry does look cool, I typically don't do symmetry in the battle like this. The leader is in the middle because he's the most heavily armored and has the most hit points, so he's most likely to get... For example, in that first wave, he gets hit three times. Whereas the fighter much weaker dude he's kind of in by himself in that corner so that's how it's all set up there's a reason for all of that they'll notice this one for sure So, and you may not like this, uh, but I, again, I edited it out. But in order to combat RNG, we're going to go ahead and do a quick save. And then we're just going to go and farm this guy. So what I mean by this is, this is my treasure hunter, Percy, the mercenary with the treasure hunter ability. He's supposed to make the enemy drop loot. And the enemy doesn't always drop loot. So I'm just going to kill this guy until he drops something.
Okay, so nothing happened there. We're gonna go and load and try that again. And we got an iron out of it. So what you didn't see is I actually did that about seven or eight times. And I'm not I'm not gonna keep doing it until I find an item I like. That is an item, and I'm just demonstrating for the purposes of this. Direct my blade. Wait, does anybody need healing? You don't. You definitely do. It's kind of a waste to put a heal on you. But you are you guys do you have archers in your groups? No. Alright. So if I were to make you stand in front, I think it would be okay. You need healing? You need a little bit. Alright, we'll just have to do this. There we go. So if they attack Zelos, sure he will do a lot of damage, but at least his clerics and this army will get some experience. When the last enemy unit is a character with no offensive capabilities, the enemy will surrender. Trying. This battlefield has a lot of woods and forests. Woods, being rough terrain, slows down the movement a bit, but offers some protection against long-range arrow fire. attackers get to go first, my character will heal before he gets to stab me. But he does get to stab twice. Nice! I don't think you can equip anything in the middle of battle, though. Stay strong, everyone! Trying to plan out my next move. Time to end this. Your command. I must stay strong. What's the world coming to with you saving my hide now? The least I can do, Barnabas. I owe you the world. Ah, everything you got, you got through your own sweat and grit. Wasn't my doing. It's an honor to fight by your side after all these years. I can't wait to show you what I've learned. Let's plan our approach to Centurion's rest. If we go to the right, looks like we're facing two squads of cavalry. Cavalry are fast and powerful warriors, but fall easily to spears. They're guarding a stable that we can take as a source of war horses for ourselves. Ram, look up for those walls! Those archers on top of the walls are protected from close range attacks, and their arrows will be much stronger. If we can break through and go up those ramps, we can take those guys out. 
or can try to shoot at them from the ground level, but I'll be at a disadvantage. Or we can go left, a more direct route. They've got one fort there, guarded by a pretty tough squad. Taking that fort won't be easy. Dran, the left route is connected by roads. Road terrain allows all units a high degree of movement range. Hmm. Why not both? More objectives to capture, more reward. You got a plan? School is in session! That's what I was trying to think, is if Barnabas could reach uh, the bridge. So those are rogues back there, and they basically attack from... They, they, they are allowed to do stealth attacks, which could kill my priests, and that's not... Obviously, that's not what I want to happen. I didn't want that to happen either. Alright, well I guess we can talk about permadeath. Um, the way permadeath works in this game is when your character is knocked out during battle, you can still revive him. But if he's still out at the end of battle, he's gone for good. Here comes Sybil, ready or not. So the way these rogues work is they can just attack from the back row. I think it's best if I send the cavalry in to soak up that damage. They only get to do this when they're on the offense. See that Denari Temple Tran? If our troops have fallen in battle, they can be revived there, or a fee. The enemy can do the same, so it's best we take those temples no matter what. He will always find a way. I feel like it's a little bit of a waste, but. Bit of block. Now, Barnabas being level 20, it's kind of a reason for me not to want to use him, but his Cavaliers are level 3, so at least I'm getting something out of it. Level 4 now. Here goes nothing. The time to act is now. You 
you got a plan? Now this guy, he's a garrisoned unit. Garrisoned units never move. Now I, I deliberately stepped into range because this way I can get some experience. He will shoot me and my characters can do nothing, but I will still get a small amount of experience. Your command. Stay strong, everyone. For my people, for my homeland. Just getting started. I must stay strong. Zelos, like Barnabas, I was I'm not really worried about him, but these characters can get stuff. I don't know if it's leadership, uh, like if there's a decimal point or something that's partial, or if it's randomly given as a leadership reward. Meaning, like, let's say he's at 32, you touch a town, you don't always go to 33. So I don't know if it's filling up as some sort of hidden gauge, or just a random yes or no. Help, my lord. goes nothing. Ready. Trying to decide which group this this team should attack. But since I saw it was turn 7, uh, I should take care of this one instead. The, the bottom group is totally capable of handling it. It just would take him a little longer. For my people. But no, I don't want to refresh heals. I just want to move. I must stay strong. So, even though um, we're in battle right now, because they're on top of wall and I'm not, I can't melee them.
they'll notice this one for sure. That's the reason why I backed up. He will always find a way. Your command? How are you doing on it? You guys have no XP whatsoever, but that's okay. Now, I could have just left Barnabas there, and I might have still been able to kill them. Um, I did, wasn't really worried about it, because I can still do this. Stay strong, everyone. So it's not like I slowed down any. I got more XP out of it, because they shot me, and I did nothing. I, get, I got XP for that battle, too. So, Tran, the next attack dog sent by the capital. Do you even know why you bleed for them? Perhaps not, until you've been made to bleed enough. This group was never going to go in and attack him. That, that, not, that's a boss group versus my weakest group. But soaking up arrows is something they can do. Alright, you're out of heals. Yes, you are. But what we can do is we can shuffle. Here comes Sybil, ready or not. Barnabas being used as a meat shield is fine. As a character still needed for the story, he can ignore permadeath. Be a shame not to put that to use. I could leverage a free death, essentially, by letting story characters soak up damage. One of the reasons I'm pushing myself so much, putting myself at risk, or or wasting experience on high level characters is because if I complete this before turn 10, I get more faction experience.
they'll notice this one for sure. How can I help, my lord? I'm just getting started. They've reached Centurion's Rest. Fall back to the keep and prepare our final defenses. Donar, save us. Sergeant Barnabas, we've got another one. Get your men organized and ready to deploy in two hours. Right. Another Denari temple. Do you have a problem with that, Sergeant? No, sir. The army is being put to good use, sir. Yes, I'm sure you think so. And try to clean the uniforms up a bit before your men shut that place down. The war's over. The public has eyes on everything we do. With what resources, sir? We barely got enough coin to keep our boys from chopping my head off in the mutiny as is. You're telling me where to worry about spit and polish now, too? Just find a way, Sergeant. Put down that paperwork and do it your damn self if you have to. We're all on tight budgets. Don't think my superiors haven't kicked me around lately. As you were. I can do it, sir. Whoa well, there, small fry. Who let you in here? Um, I'm sorry. I'll leave. Hey, don't sweat it, kid. Get on home now. Folks are probably worried sick. Damn, thought so. So, but you had a home to go to. Please let me clean your uniform, sir. I ain't got nothing to pay you, kiddo. It ain't worth spending the energy. It's okay. Please, sir. <sighs> There's supplies in the basement. Maybe the shields could have a bit more shine to them. Looks like I lost my appetite, too. Guess I'm gonna have to take my lunch so it don't go bad. It's nothing special, but it fills you up. <laughs> 